Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. I hope that you have followed the previous video. In the previous video, we have seen that how we can have a Docker Compose and can create more files into that. In this video, we want to make sure that our things are just up and running and we are able to talk between the two containers. Remember, the goal was really simple. We have already created this app. We have already created this DB, assumable, uh, because we have just written some code in the Docker Compose. We haven't yet verified that this Docker with the MongoDB is being created. We'll do that. And the most important thing is this connection line. So let's go ahead and talk onto that. First, we're gonna go on to the very top of it, the terminal. We'll do a quick LS. And then you should be 100% be able to see this docker compose.yml file. Docker is a system-wide command, but docker compose command is a bit trickier than anything else. It always needs to see this docker compose.yml file. And one more quick side note, we have a command like docker ps which gives us the information about all the processes or the containers which are running in my computer. Similarly, there is also a command which is docker compose ps. This command doesn't work system wide. This command works only if it is able to see this YAML file in the same container. So you cannot run it from wherever you like. You have to provide a docker compose.yml file in that same directory and there only you can run this command. So this was a side note. Now, I, what I want to do is I want to use this docker compose and want to run it. Now we have seen that we can use the command docker compose up to run any container. And there is also a detach mode and something which we are not gonna much, we are not much interested in that. So if I run this docker compose up, what the documentation tells you a little bit later in the dev is this docker compose up actually just prepares the container and just keep them there. Do you really want to keep them there or do you want to make them up and running so that they can connect and interact with each other? Of course, we want to make sure that they are up and running as well. If you want a Docker Compose containers, multiple containers, to be up and running, we have to modify this command by providing dash dash build. Remember, these are two dashes. This additional uh, flag that you're providing, build dash dash build, simply means to say, hey, whatever you are doing with the Docker Compose build, just make sure they are containerized as well as up and running to talk with anybody. So that's what exactly we are doing. Now let's go ahead and hit enter and see some of the very amazing thing which I'm a super fan of this Docker Compose. Let's hit enter and probably we might have to wait a little bit uh, because I want to show you an error which doesn't really pop up immediately. We can pop it up like immediately as well but there are a few essential attempts that it's gonna do and then will pop us some of the errors. So in the meantime, we can actually explore what's going on in the Docker Compose. So let's go ahead and move on to the very top and see this. So at the very top, uh, somewhere, and there we go. This is what we are having, Docker Compose dash dash build. So first and foremost, we are taking up an Alpine image, my node and building all of this is going on. And we are having this working directory and all of these things are going on. And we have this node image also going up at the side up here. So there we go, this is looking all good. And what I'm waiting for here, there we go, we got it. That's exactly what I was waiting for. So everything is working fine and we are able to see this error in DB connection. Okay, so here's a question that might be popping up in your mind that, hey, you told us that the DB is connected is up and our application is also up. We have already seen that in the dockerizing that separate image. So why they are not able to connect with each other? So the obvious thing that comes in the regular mind is that, hey, you have told us that this container is a very sacred place, kind of, and nobody can actually enter in that image. So what we have to do is we have to create an explicitly port so that world can actually talk to this. We have done exactly same with our customized image, which is node, and we are saying, hey, world will access this port 8000, and this will be the port that will be listening on the container 8000. So why we are not doing such kind of thing with the MongoDB? We should actually make that port up and running. And let me tell you, here's the magic about the Docker Compose. Let's, let me show you the diagram. When we are having a Docker Compose means this outer containerized of no matter what kind of or what type of or what number of containers you are having, probably MongoDB, Redis, MySQL, they can actually talk internally without any problem. And that's the magic which comes up through the Docker Compose. So this line that you see up here, you don't need to actually explicitly create that. Docker Compose internally create this line for you. 
you surely can modify that uh, that connection however you want there are so many options we can put up in the docker compose but by default this connection is automatically being done for us so if this connection is automatically being done for us why we are not able to connect it that's also a great reason we have to go up here so we are saying first and foremost these services so in these services we are creating these container and these are basically the name for container so the first name is my node let's go up here so basically what we are saying is this container is going to be known as my node so there we go we called it as my node let's move further we have said that this is going to be called as my mongo so let's copy that and we are saying this is going to be called as my mongo so i'm going to call this one as my mongo now the only rule here is you can definitely talk to any container but you have to name that container properly correctly and exactly so this connection is established but we have from this my node app we have to call my mongo not anybody else not hitesh not just mongo or not anything else we have to explicitly say the name of this container Remember again, uh, this is a common mistake a lot of people do. This is the name of container and this is the image that's what we are getting. That's why I explicitly said it as my Mongo to avoid the confusion. Now moving back into the index.js, remember we are saying mongodb colon slash slash in the database URL. So that is great, it's almost like HTTP. But here we are saying Mongo. Remember, we were saying localhost, so it was able to connect it properly without worrying about anything. Now we have to mention this container name exactly, which is my Mongo. If I would have said that my container name is Mongo, I would have said it Mongo. But to explain this all mess, I have to actually explicitly mention that as my Mongo. That's why I avoided to call it as Mongo. In most of the articles and blogs and no matter what the place you are looking up for the reference, you're going to see that in every Docker Compose file, the Mongo container is always called as Mongo. I could have done that as well, but where's the fun in that? So now let's go ahead and save this. So make sure the URL is pop proper. Mongo DB colon slash slash my Mongo and then the port number and the test setup. We're going to talk about the port number as well. Uh, let's go ahead, move on to the terminal. I'm going to press control C to kill that clean the terminal and run this docker compose space up space hyphen hyphen build or dash dash build hit that enter and uh, now it's going to do all these things a little bit again we're going to be using the caching quite a lot but immediately you can see that it says db connected so we were able to connect with this docker extra container now this brings back the question that hey how come it knows that we are actually explicitly listening on this port now this is the default configuration of a mongodb this is the very default port if you're going to make a change then you have to explicitly mention that hey we are not running on the default port we are running on that these all magic are being done for you by the docker compose now this is all looking great looking absolutely awesome and we could have introduced more thing here as well like we had to wait a little bit up here in the error db we could have introduced a process here to make sure that we learn or understand more about these things and crashings and a whole bunch of other things but i think right now we have learned enough here so that we can have it now surely we can do a little bit of tweakings on this uh, that we actually are able to access this application through the web browser as well. I will definitely do that, but that's going to come up in the next video and that is totally optional. We're not going to be learning anything much further on the Docker or the Docker Compose itself, but I want to make this application with a little bit piece of more code so that we can actually access this through the container uh, or through the browser as well, because the goal of this project uh, as of now till here, it is complete. We are able to uh, have this my node. We are able to have this my Mongo as well. They are actually connecting with each other, which we have seen on the terminal. But now this final pipe is actually missing up. This pipe, which is connecting it to the user, is actually missing. So I highly recommend to follow the next video as well. But that is totally optional because that is like scenario based, which we have created. Nothing related to the Docker or Docker Compose. So I hope you are enjoying this series. This is so much fun to talk and deal up with this. So let's go ahead in the next video and catch you up there. Hope you have already subscribed to the channel.